this lesson is going to talk about filling in the first few terms of a sequence. Um, it's pretty basic. They typically give you a formula to go by, and they tell you where to start from. So they're asking us to start at n greater than or equal to 0, so we'll start with n being 0, and we follow this formula here. Okay, so a sub 0, or when n is 0, we would have 3 to the 0 power minus 5. Anything to the 0 power is 1, so we're left with 1 minus 5, or negative 4. So that first term in our sequence is going to be negative 4. What about the next term? We'd go to up 1 to 1. Okay, so we'd have 3 to the first power now, minus 5, which gives us 3 minus 5, or negative 2. So the next term in our sequence is negative 2. And you just continue. So a sub 2 now. So if n is 2, we'd have 3 to the second power minus 5. 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 5 gives us 4. And they wanted the first four terms, so we go one more time. And so if n is 3, we'd have 3 to the third power minus 5. So 27 minus 5, or 22. So there are the first four terms in our sequence, our negative 4, negative 2, 4, 22, and it will continue following that uh, formula that they gave to us. Okay, here's the second example. This is written a little bit differently. Um, here's the formula we're supposed to use. We go 2 times p minus 3. This tells us to start at p being 1, and we could continue until infinity, but fortunately, they only asked us to do the first four terms. So that's all we're going to do. But let's start with, again, it said to start where p is 1. Okay, so if p is 1, we would have 2 times 1 minus 3, or 2 minus 3, which is negative 1. So the first term in our sequence would be negative 1. We go up 1, so now we're at p being 2, so we have 2 times 2 minus 3, or 4 minus 3, which is 1. Up one more to, and excuse me, p being 3, so we'd have 2 times 3 minus 3, or 6 minus 3, which is 3. And the fourth term would be when p is 4, so we do 2 times 4 minus 3, or 8 minus 3, which is 5. So the first four terms in our sequence are 1, negative 1, 1, 3, and 5. And it would continue from there. Okay, so that gives you a couple of different looks. Um, here, this is a similar look, but has a few more um, things that we have to do. Notice we have our variable n here, and also in the denominator. So you just want to be careful on these. Make sure you do each step carefully. Again, it wants the first four terms. It tells us here to start at n equals 1, and so that's what we're going to do. So if n is 1, in the numerator I had to have 2 times 1 minus 3, and in the denominator I had to have 1 squared plus 1. Uh, on top, 2 times 1 is 2, minus 3 is negative 1. On the denominator, 1 squared is 1, plus 1 more gives me 2. So that first term in my sequence is negative 1 half. Uh, next term, if n is 2, I'd have 2 times 2 minus 3 in the numerator, and 2 squared plus 1 in the denominator. So we have 4 minus 3 is 1 on the top, and 2 squared is 4 plus 1 is 5 in the bottom. So 1 fifth is that next term. We keep going because they want the first 4. So if we have 3 there, again, you just plug it into the formula they gave you. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, so we have 2 times 3. This time would be 6 minus 3 is 3. And in the denominator, 3 squared is 9 plus 1 is 10. And our final term, if <coughs> 4, we have 2 times 
4 minus 3 over 4 squared plus 1. 2 times 4 is 8, minus 3 gives me 5 in the numerator, and 4 squared is 16, plus 1 is 17. So the first four terms of the sequence are negative 1 half, 1 fifth, 3 tenths, and 5 seventeenths. Okay, and again, we're just following that equation they give us. Okay, this one throws another little wrench because we have two variables. We're only given that we're using this for the values of n that will be changing. So x is just going to be a constant x there. Okay. We're going to start where n is 1. So let's go ahead and do that. If n is 1, we have 1 times x over 2 times 1 squared. Well, in the top, that just gives me x. In the bottom, 1 squared is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So the first term of my sequence is going to be x over 2. <clears throat> we go up 1, then we have n being 2, so we'd have 2 times x over 2 times 2 squared. So in the numerator, that gives me 2x. In the denominator, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. And notice this does reduce. 2 goes into 8 4 times. So we get x over 4. The next term in our sequence is when n is 3. So then we have 3 times x over 2 times 3 squared. That gives us 3x over 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. This reduces because 3 goes into both of those. 3 goes into 18 6 times. So I'm left with just x over 6. And our final term takes place when n is 4, not the final term, but the only one they wanted. So we have 4 times x over 2 times 4 squared. That gives us 4x over uh, 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. <clears throat> and we can reduce that because 4 goes into 32 8 times. And we're left with x over 8. So they could have given us a more simplified formula because it ended up reducing each time. But the first four terms of our sequence are x over 2, x over 4, x over 6, x over 8, and it would continue in that manner. Hey, okay, we have one last problem. It's written a little differently. Okay, they tell you a sub 1 is 5. So what that means is that the first term in your sequence is going to be 5, no matter what. So they gave us the first term. After that, okay, it says that you take, so a of k plus 1, so that just means the next term is equal to a of k, so the previous term, that would be the one before k plus 1, <coughs> and you add 4 to it. So really all we're doing is taking the term before that we had before, and we're adding 4 more. So our first term was 5, which means our second term would be 5 plus 4, which is 9. Our third term would be this term 9 plus 4 more, which is 13. And our, fine, our fourth term would be 13 plus 4, which is 17. And it would just continue in that manner. So it's written fairly confusing. <laughs> for the result that we got with just 5, 9, 13, and 17.